too often people think that they can have their secret sins. They could go off and willfully sin and they know, hey, I know this is wrong, but I'm just going to keep doing it anyways. And you kind of think that you could just keep things a secret. But you know what? Be sure your sin will find you out. And those things that, that you do, that you just want to cling to, you want to do, they're always going to come to light. And you know what comes along with that? The shame. You can save yourself from the shame by just staying away from the wickedness and just taking heed to the instruction of the Lord. But oftentimes what happens, and we've seen it happen with with King David, right? He thought he can have his sin. He could. He thought he could have his secret relationship and and just give in to the lust of his flesh when he desired a woman that he couldn't have had because she was married and he decided to commit adultery. Well, what happened to him is then he was, he tried to do something in secret. You know what? God made his shame openly known in front of everyone, and of course, his own son then defiled his concubines and his wives just for the whole world to see. And that was a judgment of God. Don't think that you can get you can, You may be able to hide from people for a while. You may be able to, to, to cover the eyes of your parents or of your friends or whatever, or other people at church. But God sees everything. And he's the one that's going to right all the wrongs anyways. And he's the one that if you're saved, he loves you. And as a loving father, he's going to try to chastise you and discipline you and get you back on the right path. But you know what comes along with that? There's going to be a lot of shame. Because when he comes and chastises, it's going to be known. You, you, can't, you can't cover those things up. Ephesians chapter 5, let's, let's look at uh, verse number 1 here. The Bible reads, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication... And all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. As a, as a child of God, as someone who's believed in Jesus Christ, and as 1 Corinthians 6 says, great passage again this morning, you know, hey, we're washed. We're sanctified. You may have been, you may have done these sins. You may have been part of, of this wickedness. But when you're saved, you're born again, you're washed in the blood of Christ Hey, this doesn't become someone who's sanctified to go off and then go back and get involved in these wicked sins. Don't let the fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, that ought not to even be once named among you as become a saint. That's not how you ought to live. We believe in having standards. We believe in having high standards. And again, if that makes you look like some old fuddy duddy and you're old fashioned, I can't believe, you know, that you, you know, you're such a square, what I'm not. I'm getting too old. I need, to, I need to learn some of the new, the new language. What, whatever, uh, whatever you call people who, who you know, are real straight laced uh, these days. I, I don't know what the terms are. I haven't heard. People don't say them loud enough for me to hear. I guess, but um, you know, who cares? Because what you need to care about more than what other people say or think about you is what God thinks about you. And 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 accept this admonition. Don't let these things even be named among you as becoming... And then look at verse number four. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. You may not be doing the fornication or, you know, this, this uncleanness. But you don't even need to be talking about this stuff and just all this foolish talking that goes around. You know, the filthiness and the foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Stay away from it all. Amen. Have no business with them, no part of that. And you, you become, you know, if you get uh, um, exposed to that and, and people having those type of conversations, you don't withdraw yourself from that. Yeah, right. Right. Try to keep yourself right with God instead of right with the cool kids. Yeah. And you know, that's, this isn't just for kids. This isn't just for teenagers. How about people at work? How about people on the job? Adults. It doesn't matter. These cliques exist everywhere. Everywhere. 